Well, you have awesome improv. Like, I mean, I've, oh, yeah, I've, we've, yeah, we've, yeah. We've, uh, we've heard you on Lauren Lapkus's uh, With Special Guest. Yeah. Oh, my and, God. That uh, was so fun. Thank you. And oh, God. It's just, just loopy, and you guys are just oh, clearly just making each other laugh. <laughs> I had the best time with her on that. It's just so fun to just be like, all right, let's just go for it. Here we go. <laughs> you know, um, it's, you know, it's my, it's my favorite thing to do. I've been, I mean, I, it, it's, improv can be so scary. And I really, I really only remember it when it's bad. Like I, I remember shows that I've done when I'm, t when I'm tank and I'm terrible. Mm -hmm. And when it's good, I just, you just, I just remember like that was fun at a great time, mm -hmm. but it has an ability to, you know, you really, it's just, you know, you throw your hand in a bag of snakes and you're like, I don't know what's, you know, what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's, it's a it's a lot of fun to do and because you just you're not sitting there trying too hard to come up like i was saying earlier to come up with like what's funny and you don't know where you're gonna go and what's actually gonna you just have to play when you're with someone like lauren you're just like here we go i trust you and we're just gonna have a good time so uh -huh. yeah you mentioned uh, earlier that um you're teaching improv at the groundlings you're st you're still a groundling you're never not you're not never an next growling, right? Like you're still yeah, well, well, I was in, I, yeah, I was in the, their their Sunday company for a year and a half, and then uh -huh. I've been teaching there. So I've been an alum like since I've been a teacher. I was never in the main company, but oh. when you're in the main company, you you're it's kind of like Supreme Court. You're there as long as you want, and, and you, <laughs> I mean, you know, you resign, but uh -huh. you stay there when you're made there for you know you're in the company for as long as as you want to be in there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. some people, you know, become groundlings and they're in there for six months or a year. And some people have been in there for 12 to 15 years, you know, mm -hmm. that they've stayed, mm -hmm. that it's become home. So, um, and you're always welcome back. I mean, it's, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mm -hmm. guess I could name a few people that have some weird, like everywhere, but most people it's like, you know, you're an alum and you can sort of come back and you, and you do shows there. So it's been, um, a place that, I mean, since I've lived in LA, I mean, I started taking classes there in the fall of 99. And I was performing there in for the year and a half in the Sunday Company from 2004 to 2005, and started teaching there in 2006. So yeah, I'm 15, 15 years that I've been teaching there, and um, it's wow. been it's been great. I mean, I love obviously the people you get to come up with, and the people you know, it's just it's wild to look at the list of people. You're like, oh wow, like you just you just get so lucky to, you know, people I used to do scenes with and I would watch TV and go the people I'm in scenes with and, and, and shows with are funnier than and now they're the people that are all on TV so <laughs> or in movies so that's a really cool thing and uh -huh. um, you know and I, I really like the the students that are there to really learn it's tough it's a hard program and we have to be really hard teachers mm -hmm. so I try to tell the students like I got to be kind of tough on you but it's good because it it is it's really good comedy training and really good character acting, you know, uh -huh, training uh -huh. and writing. So is it very intense, the course? It is every, every level you, your teacher decides whether you move up to the next level or if you have to mm -hmm. take the class again. And most people have to repeat. Um, and I try to, I mean, I had to repeat a lot of the lower level classes. I had to take them, uh, you know, several times. And it's good because you, you don't want to move up before you're ready. They throw you to the mm -hmm. wolves and the next mm -hmm. level gets even harder. Mm -hmm. So my thing is like, stay here and get really good master this and then go to the next thing uh -huh. so it takes and then there's long waiting lists between the upper level classes so oh, i was okay. in the i was in the school longer than i was in college i was in the school for four and a half years and i did sunday company for a year and a half so and that's the sunday company you're putting up new material every single week on a sunday night you're putting up mm -hmm. new sketches and oh, every six months yeah. you get voted on whether you get to stay in it or not yeah. so it's a okay. very you know you're constantly throwing material up there but the best training uh that i still use to this day like just my ability to do quick costume changes to write quick ideas to throw things away like you spend all this time and if it doesn't work you just throw it away you know and just not be too precious about anything and so uh -huh. yeah did you actually learn teaching skills from dr maya angelou oh <laughs> oh Excellent. I, uh, I will say I, I, I learned what not to do from her and I, I was someone who was a huge fan of her work and yeah. she was obviously she did some incredible things. But yes, the, um, my uh, Dr. Angelo was a professor of mine and when I was in college. And um, I one of my first my first solo show was about basically like shattering the illusion that celebrities are these otherworldly things and um 
she was very much a celebrity and which was disappointing to me as a student of poetry that I wanted to learn and student she was of just poetry. really about you are <laughs> yeah 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 I studied oh, awesome. English and German literature yeah oh cool who are mm -hmm. who are some of your favorites um oh wow well think um, about that I did me media studies which isn't that far off really it's lots of linguistics as well but not sure. literature yeah mm -hmm. but Oh, wow. That's a tough question because I have like severe ADHD and I can't remember anything. Oh, oh no, no. I tell it. And also when you're put on the spot, you're like, I'm, I'm uh, uh, John Johnson. <laughs> but, I know, but, and, and most of my favorites are like um, Chekhov and Nabokov and um, Camille Pisania, who is Portuguese. He's Portuguese, yeah. Um, okay. Goethe, I I love also. Sure. Yeah. So th there's a there's a there's a huge list, but mm -hmm. like it's yeah. so many that my brain is not checking in. <laughs> no, I totally I totally get it. I love that though, and that's 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 great. And I mm -hmm. I was I went to school to be an English major, and I thought I would just do theater and acting on the side, and then my English department was so many. Basically, it was just so hard. <laughs> but it was also like a bunch of old dead white guys to, and it was just like read these giant things and write papers about it, and there was nothing creative about it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why I thought I would go to a liberal arts school, and because I was like, well, I want to make things. Like, not like I think I'm Goethe, but like I want to be able to be part of the the creative force, not just reading it and analyzing yeah. it and yeah, yeah. breaking Academia it apart. Academia really it, puts you in a place of teaching uh you know yeah, teaching, and, and repeating and repeating, and repeating what repeating you're taught. Others ideas yeah, yeah, yeah. and never mm -hmm. allow yes being and it's also to come up with your own yeah. it's also critical in a way and it sort of it it sort of takes it's it's the thing where i always think about like when i i don't remember who said this some it was and i'm gonna butcher the quote but basically it's like you see a beautiful butterfly in nature and then there's someone out there that's gonna stab it into some styrofoam mm -hmm. and study it and like kill its life and explain why it's all those colors and all those things. And, mm -hmm. to some, and, and, and on to some level, I'm interested in that. Like I yeah. want to know, mm -hmm. but another thing I'm like, you killed the butterfly. I'm like, let the mm -hmm. butterfly just be a butterfly instead of being like, here's why we like that, you know? Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. think um, why I like teaching improv is that it's so creative. I'm basically mm -hmm. looking at my students and saying, Hey, you two do this, and I am not putting. I'm trying really hard not to put my take on it and say mm -hmm. you made this. You did a scene. Let's try to make what you're doing better. Uh -huh. And I that's what I like about teaching versus saying no, 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 no. It has to be this, and you have to do this mm -hmm. like X, Y, and Z comedians that I've seen before me. You know, it's mm -hmm. sort of that that part of it. So with the English major, I was like, you know, you couldn't have a creative opinion about anything it was mm -hmm. sort of like well that's the wrong opinion and it was like oh, oh yeah. you know yeah. um once well, i tried, you could, I tried I mean, to do a feminist uh, approach to um some reinterpretations of um uh, what, uh, peter pan mm -hmm. and like analyzing time and gender and whatever and my teacher was just like i'm not a feminist you have a four <sighs> out of 20 the first time i failed in my life because my teacher was a misogynist <laughs> well uh, yeah and a woman i think and a woman and a woman oh you know what sadly mm -hmm. i hate to say i'm not surprised because that's yeah. i mean as a gay person some of the most homophobic people i know are gay people in their own way they don't they don't always call it out that way yeah but they're the ones who'll be like you can't do that and it's like oh you're gay it's like and women can be can be really rough. I can't imagine really like I'm not a feminist. Yeah. Like yeah, literally yeah. saying that phrase. <laughs> it's just that. Exactly. It's I like, mean, yeah. Why would the, you? The, 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 um... I don't believe in human rights, but well, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. I understand, like in the seventies, what people thought yeah. feminist meant was this like radical, you know, burning bras and screaming and hating on men. We've learned in the last. 50 years <laughs> yeah. that being a feminist is being a humanist and saying I, I, I want women to have equal rights and women are wonderful and women have a lot to offer like basic things nothing mm -hmm. like groundbreaking so to yeah. say like I, I don't believe I didn't in that even go into like gender neutral territory like I'm I'm oh. non-binary like I didn't even go there I right. was just like 
just like standard like views of like <laughs> feminism and gender and uh, no no not allowed not allowed isn't that wild and also i mean peter pan is so fascinating because so many women have played that role that the role of peter is like usually because i mean i think it's just the acrobatics and the athletics of it mm-hmm. all but it's a very interesting character and the physiognomy is this as of, well, I think, mm-hmm. of Peter Pan. It's it's very, the physiognomy is very, uh, like, morphologically very slim, yes. very, you know. Yes. yes. There's very... been a ton of women who have played Peter Pan. Right. That's what I mean. I mean, I, I think more women have played that role than men. I mean, yeah. at this point, I, I think I can only think of, like, Mary Martin and Kathy Rigby and people like, it's mm-hmm. it's always like that sort of, you know, didn't um, Williams, Brian Williams' daughter, who was on Girls, she did a, the live version of it. Uh, you know, it's like, I don't watch, I don't watch. Yeah, but I, I just feel like it's, I don't know. And also read my paper and give me an F if what I, if what I wrote doesn't add up or yeah, doesn't yeah, yeah. equate, but just as a blanket, like I'm not interested yeah. in that approach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know, that was, just... I found that a lot and, and um, yeah. And so when I ended up switching over to the theater major, which was really scary because in where I grew up, nobody does what I do now for it's sort of like and I it's like it felt more creative it felt more like you're going to come in and you're going to you're going to direct plays you're going to be you know you get yeah. there was just more like so in there that I, right? yeah and I, I I don't know I just sort of encourage people to be creative and the only yeah. reason I have anything going is because I created my own stuff I wouldn't just sit around and wait and also, it's really easy to stand on the sidelines and criticize things. Mm-hmm. The easiest thing, I actually am at a point now that I, when I watch a movie or a TV show that everyone loves and I don't love it, I don't like it, I don't take any pleasure from that. I get so frustrated. I'm like, oh, man, I wish oh, yeah, I liked sure. this thing. Yeah. I, wish I, I wish it brought me joy and there are things that you watch. And, but I don't, I remember a younger me would be like, I have a different opinion. I think it's <laughs> trash. And I find that so... That's so easy. Like you can look mm-hmm. at anything and go, I don't care for that thing. And it's like, care, yeah. if when you do care about the thing, it's so much more interesting. Yeah. Or you do have a different approach and a different angle mm-hmm. at something. That's what you want. That's like the, mm-hmm. that's when you're being brave. It's like saying, I actually like this thing and here's why, or I see it differently and here's why. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Or, or I could think it's hard in that way. Good like things about something that you don't like is super positive. Like I don't like the story but i love the art direction yeah or i love the sure. acting and i don't like everything else <laughs> or just finding the the good thing and just to be like no like i don't like it but like some something something is good plus what what not is to complete be, right. not to what? be like toxic positive like <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> like everything yeah, no, needs to be toxic positive, positive. <laughs> That's a great show title. Please do a show called Toxic Positive. <laughs> Actually, now that you're saying this, like um, I've always seen uh, Made of Things as, because until very recently, until we relaunched it, we mostly did musicians because that's what we had access to when we love music. And yeah. so... We're and not exactly on the route for uh, when We're not, not on the route for comedians because the comedians we like don't come to Portugal. So, or are very you know um very rarely in portugal at all so it's uh, so ver- it's very subscribe rare subscribe to our patreon yeah subscribe to no, our yes. patreon no, you, now but, we're like patreon you. whores and now we sell ourselves for a, a for a, a buck yeah. so we can go to like london <laughs> no, it's true. and, it's and true. la true. and go yes. to festivals and like i also would i would love to come to portugal i've not ne- it's mediterranean i've never been to portugal spain greece Italy. I've never been anywhere. Well, if you ever come, then would, you have a, a, I, a, a lovely place. I would understand. love to come and see it because it's yeah. it's a part of the, it's the number one part of the world that I want to come and see. No, we're, we are inviting you. If you well, want to come, we'll, thanks, uh, I'd we'll love to. Uh, hook you up with everything. Yes. Yeah. There you go. But um, but uh, no, it's true because of the Patreon. Because it's um, I was joking because. It's our Patreon is very low, but um, everyone's doing it now. But because of Zoom and because of mm. this whole pandemic, oh, yeah. now everyone's accustomed to um, doing Zoom calls and stuff. So it kind of made sense. It's something that I've always wanted to do on Made of Things, and it's really good. And uh, once we can travel, the plan is to have support and go, go mm. visit places that in which like uh, our favorite artists mm. are playing. 
So, but I was, as I was saying, so that's the point of the whole Patreon thing. But uh, the, the um, and us <laughs> being able to eat. And then... Uh, <laughs> of course, that's also good too. Course, that's also good. <laughs> but uh, um, I was saying that because of the creative approach, I've always seen like made of things as... Uh, somewhere where we can talk seriously and we can have serious subjects and we can talk about art but like i'm not really interested it's not really journalism and it's i've and i come from media so i and i've done journalism but i've 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 really i'm really not interested in the truth like <laughs> mm. i don't yeah. think art relates to truth mm -hmm. that much and i'm interested in art more than the truth mm -hmm. so i'd rather much just muck about with people <laughs> because i think that's more truthful than them speaking about yeah i was gonna say that feels maybe that is your truth versus like yeah, sure. a perception of other people of what the truth is you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i'm less interested in what musicians have to say about what they think about their own things because it kind of speaks for itself Right. Yeah. Like you like obviously narrative art forms like uh, comedy or uh, acting and stuff like that have more uh, of a textual. Uh, I mean, this is extremely serious, <laughs> for, <laughs> but uh, 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 more more of a textual, uh, co more of textual content that can be analyzed or thought of or spoken of or explained. But like kind of music, like, you sure. know, it's, such it's a, basically um... you get it or you don't. You know, even though there's a lot of explaining, and I believe in music and the logics of uh, music theory and knowing about music in order to understand it better, but at the same time, it's like you either like it or you don't. You know, so it's like uh, I've always done made of things in this way, like um, not necessarily. I I'm tired of like I'm saying like a lot, uh, but. Uh, I'm tired of like the same questions all over the, you know, all the time. So I try to have like stupid approaches and make people creative in their answers. Yeah. That's basically what I do. So I it's mean, the I... same. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. it's trying to get a different angle to like make the blood flow, uh, the brain fl uh, flow, like brain, brain blood flow flow. Brain, blood, flow, <laughs> flow. Well, I flow, think flow. too, like, you know, you can learn about uh, with art, any art. Mm -hmm. You can learn about it for the rest of your life, but ultimately everyone's opinions are valid for themselves. So, like, sure. I can listen to a song and go, I love that. And you can explain to me why it's not as good as another song. But I, what I like, I like. With comedy, what makes you laugh? With mm -hmm. art, like visual art, you walk in and go, what really takes me? And I don't, I can learn what, I can learn all the other reasons but ultimately, and so people will say, you know, like, oh, I don't know much about comedy, but I like, and I, no, you know as much as I do, because you are mm -hmm. a human being and you laugh, you know, or you're a human and you think and you, you experience things, you feel. So, you know, I'm passionate about a certain thing. I will talk about it till I'm blue in the face, but it is kind of boring in a way more, more than just like, boom, what, you know, you know, what's your flavor, you know, and that's what mm -hmm. you like. I, I don't believe in guilty pleasure. No, and at people all. say my guilty pleasure movie. I'm like, no, that's your favorite movie. That's I, great. I, I yeah. literally said that yesterday. Like my guilty pleasure. I was speaking with someone. My guilty pleasure is, oh, I don't believe in guilty pleasures. You like what you like. Right. <laughs> I'm totally not like I. I seriously don't believe in guilty pleasures. Like if you like corny music, then you like corny music. If you like whatever, you know, just enjoy. Enjoy. If you enjoy anything, that's great. You know. Yes. Some people except, like think, except, you for, except for uh, edgy, edgy comedy. Oh, sure. <laughs> like that says more about the person yeah. than the art, I think. Yeah. 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 You like, mean like just horrible shock jock people? Like, yeah, or, yeah. Oh, yeah. That is completely not valid and we do not endorse it. Well, well <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I mean, true. If you, it's true. It's my true. thing is, I mean, if you punch down, if you're about like, oh yeah, yeah, your comedy is about so othering so. people, then mm -hmm. get the fuck out of here. I'm not yeah. into mm -hmm. what anything you have to say or do. Yeah. And a lot of it is like people who are just angry, like, and stupid. I mean, like, and they they call it comedy, but they're just they they are hateful and they and they want to take it out on, you know. So 
Plus, I no. feel like it's a lot of people that were stuck in a certain sensibility of 2001 to 2004, I think, that was like very on vogue at the time, like, oh, edgy and stuff like that. And then people forget that the edginess was also Tom Green being like absurd, you know, and then uh, the was who wasn't necessarily very aggressive. You know, but, but there's a lot of this, especially in Portugal, I think, like you wouldn't be uh, yeah. germane to no uh necessarily but like uh the uh our comedians that over here then that, that's why i don't want to like yeah. dump on comedians mm -hmm. but um on comedians over here but like I, that's why i really don't base my like we don't really base our stuff over here because a lot of it is this because the stand-up uh and uh especially improv uh because it's very new but stand-up is like 20 years old over here Really, it's very oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, very, yeah. very fresh. It's very fresh. I mean, very yeah. new, I mean, very young. Portugal was in a dictatorship until the mid seventies, yeah. and right. somehow we got delayed by twenty or thirty years. Because um, the practices are, are, you know, and we're catching so, up right now. Yeah, yeah, it's we're it's, catching it's, up. it's it's slow. Uh, it's we're perfectly democratic now, but it's like. Um, some cultural things take their time and people aren't ready mm -hmm. and it's profoundly catholic the country so uh so stand up took a while and still now there's not very it's not it's hardly ucb you know it's like i mean stand up and improv and the shows and whatever you put on it's mm -hmm. very rarely v like um how do i say this unaggressive it's just like a lot of othering as you said a lot of uh, a lot of yeah. insulting fat women for some reason. Oh, yeah, it's like well, why? it's also it makes sense in a in a way because it's like if you are not allowed to have free thought and you're repressed, uh, you know, for centuries, and all of a sudden it's like okay, you know, there's a there's a real rallying against mm -hmm. that, and so mm -hmm. and people don't know how to just, you know, to me it's like you got to find internally like what can i mean i don't do stand up but like i always find that like you have to be the joke like when i play characters you laugh at what i'm you laugh at me i'm not laughing at you i'm not pointing and going look how dumb you are look how xyz you are <laughs> it's all about what i'm saying being ridiculous yeah, and yeah. you have to find that and and when you're not allowed i mean you know and so people just start it's like a lot of new comedians, a lot of Twitter comedians, when they were starting, they were just like, I have to say something outrageous to get anybody to pay attention to me. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, and, and also there was this whole thing That's about true. like, yeah. people were so like, we all thought, and I'll say about it, in our, in our country, we had a lot of white comedians who all thought they were very liberal and very like woke and sort of post-racial. And so they would make racist jokes to, to, make a comment on racism you know and so you have people that did it brilliantly in my opinion like okay. sarah silverman and sandra bernhardt who i think mm -hmm. are impeccable yeah and brilliant and really if you look at the jokes they're making they're not laughing they're not othering people they're being they're yeah. being assholes mm -hmm. themselves yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but all the other, other comedians wanted to be that yeah, and they yeah. were just throwing mm -hmm. things and they would say things and you go oh man that's just racist yeah, or that's yeah, just yeah, yeah. sexist it's misogynist yeah. if that's just homophobic mm -hmm. it's transphobic mm -hmm. or whatever it's like ew and they were just trying to be funny but you're like you just like <laughs> and and i some of them i know and i'm like i know you're not like that and it sucks <laughs> yeah, because yeah, i yeah. know that's not really what's in your heart oh that's a lot of the discussion here uh, all always is like you say something that's homophobic and racist as a comedian on especially on twitter but like um because the live mm. shows are different for some reason i've attended some and they are less racist and yeah. less homophobic yeah. but on twitter you have like i guess it's the language uh, of twitter and not being online but it's much worse and because maybe it's what you're saying so in order to be like I don't know. I guess uh, uh, retweetable or something, or or get or trend or edgy in some way. But um, I've the, a lot of the discussion is like from actually the, the actual comedians is, and we have a very specific, a very specific uh, uh, comedian whose name I'm not going to say, but who says that a lot. It's just like this is comedy. If you don't get it, you don't understand that I'm doing comedy, and it's like, and this is not what I believe in. But and we were, we say like, well. 
you're saying it, dude. <laughs> uh, you're still you're saying the one it. saying you're it. You're still actively you're saying still, it. You're still actively right. being propagating ho- the homophobic ideas. and uh, yeah, misogynistic it's, and uh, it's intolerant. It's not a joke if you're punching down. If you're you punching said. down, right. it doesn't... It, and you're, but he's a great guy, inciting, but I'm a great guy. You're, yeah. you're inciting violence. You're inciting mm-hmm. your audience to hate those people and to other those people. And you have a responsibility if you're in front of 100 people or if you have a thousand followers on Twitter. That's a thousand people that saw you. You put that out in the world. And really, like I said, I have laughed. Things that Sarah has said that are so like, oh my God, I can't believe she said that. But you really are like, it's so smart. But don't go there if you're not really going to be. And and Sarah's also the first one to like recant so much. And she's now been about like undoing things. And I'm like, so many times I'm like, I don't know if y'all saw that. She just apar- apologized to Paris Hilton. And I know on a human level, she really hurt her feelings. And, and Sarah is a, a very dear human being uh-huh. and felt terrible about making another person feel bad. But I'm like, this was at the height of Paris Hilton getting so much attention and fame for being pretty horrible. And like, yeah, yeah, we're just yeah. adding nothing to the conversation. <laughs> so not like, I, I'm not saying like, good, more, more, but it's not like, it was hardly like, you know, but anyway, yeah, so it's hardly was, Britney, like, yeah. it's hardly right, Britney. exactly. Yeah. And it's mm-hmm. at all. And it's like, you know, but everyone feels this like, you know, I mean, there are things that I've said in early, you know, my first Chloe video when I, I, I made a terrible joke about Natasha Leone that I felt like oh, was yeah. so gross and <laughs> her having hep C when she really did. Cause I, I it was literally the first video mm-hmm. I made and it was like, this, who cares? And you know, and I've since apologized a lot for that because I'm like, you know what? That's not cool. Like, that's a person who I love. You know, not I, know, I don't know her personally, I, but I, I'm I, I don't of her know work. her. Yeah, but, but I love herself. Yeah. Why would I? And I just learned like, don't do that. That's like personal. Like, uh-huh. make it up, and then you, and then the joke has to be on you. Uh-huh. So we've all done it as comedians. We've all said mm-hmm. things that sure. were like, ugh. Yeah, but and, 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 and just people, people like you, we don't like comes out right. We're not like born like completely like, flawless, flawless. <laughs> yeah. so unless just, like, you're the ones so just like acknowledge apologize yeah yeah <laughs> yes we all fuck and up. also but the thing not to do in this moment is to say that's my comedy and if you don't get me <laughs> you don't get comedy exactly. you sound old exactly. you sound tired and you're not gonna stick around like that's oh. not oh. the kids something aren't, that, don't accept that yeah 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 something that really gets on my nerves unapologetic I I think only <laughs> only assholes say unapologetic. I know. It's just like unapologetic. Be sorry for right. something. And, and, and unapologetic was a, was fuck? was the name of it's the not... album of like was it something really good? I can't remember. It's not like it wasn't Britney. It, was it? it wasn't Britney, but it was like Britney adjacent. <laughs> Britney adjacent. I have to look it up, but my phone is over there. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll uh, uh, there will be a bubble. There will be a bubble. Well, you I mean, have to if, bubble up. If it's in later. context with like. Because I know that there's a there's a phrase that you know unapologetically black or like unapologetically oh, yeah, gay. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Mm-hmm. Okay, at one hundred percent. But yeah, when you're saying Aguilera, who was like, a, it, I think you're right. I think you're right. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. I think it was, and Christine is amazing. I think it was. It was I think it was. Oh, by the way, I forgot. One hundred and seven Fahrenheit is forty one point six. It's insane. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, this is a, this is like <laughs> harks back to like an hour ago. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. Unapologetic. I'll look it up. Unapologetic. Rihanna. Oh, Rihanna. Oh, it's Rihanna. Rihanna. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Also a good one. Also a good one. Great, a great one. Yeah. But, yeah. It's just a yeah. strange thing when people like they double down on where they. It, it just it comes. It's a such dick. a. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. an old. It's an. It's a scary thing as someone who's. Yeah. In my forties, and as I as you're getting older, you're like, "Don't." I, I just be joined. That way. Oh yay! Welcome. Ago. Yay! <laughs> yay! No, but it's joined. just you know, as we as we get older, I'm like, you gotta evolve. You know, mm-hmm. I had to learn to call people they and them. You know, yeah. and, and, oh, it's so hard in Portuguese. Oh, because there yeah, are so many is, ways oh, to sure, no, okay. control. I have been so interested in this because of so many romance languages that do already gender so many yeah. nouns. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. How does that work in a, so, now in our non-binary in, world? That we're in, 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 in Portuguese, the right person to ask. Yeah. In Portuguese, you have um, a for female, 
O for as as a termination, like as sure. an ending. Uh, right. O for masculine. So mm -hmm. I personally use an E, like an E, um, as a, instead of an A or an O. So okay. it like it, it would be like not E no no, but E no no, or just like slash the pronoun. But this altogether. is in a uh, conversation, right? Colloquially. Uh, no, written. Oh, written. You can use an X instead of... A lot of people use X's, of, yeah, yeah. But there's a, there's a problem with the X, uh, because for people, um, for like in, uh, visually impaired people, uh, if, they're, if they have like software to read um, text... Like alt text, text and stuff? Um, yeah. The X doesn't come through. So, oh. so using an E is more inclusive of the visually impaired. Okay, um, but this is pretty you forward. Can, you can no use, one knows uh, this, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. not something that is that very... People are still using X's. The thing is that because of plurals, X's, and uh, because of uh, the plurals in Portuguese and with S's, and the way we pronounce things is very Russian-sounding, so it's very close. So S's go sh. So I guess that eats up on the X as well. So it makes everything very confusing. I, I don't know exactly how how the the software oh, works, yeah. but um, our our mother should know. Yeah, yeah. She but, mm, we'll ask. our mother um, has this project where she um, does all the 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 web development for visually impaired students, um, and so like she taught me like a lot a lot about it. But like I don't, I don't exactly know. Like I just know that the X like interferes with the, with the with with the listening. Uh, there's another way to use the neutral, which is an an U, instead mm. of of the the A or the or the O. But I feel like I personally feel that it sounds very masculine because it sounds like closer to the O. Um, oh, that's but true, that's just oh, a pers again. personal preference. Whatever people sure. use is. Again, again R O's at the end of uh, R O's at the end of uh, words are like like use like so like U, you know like right. O if you yeah, add yeah. to the no. Yeah. For instance, my name Antonio, it's O's all Antonio. the way. Antonio, Antonio, so it's Antonio, mm -hmm. Antonio. Okay. So uh, mm -hmm. substituting that uh, if it were uh, in the masculine form uh, with a U, it would sound exactly the same. So it's a problem. Yeah, it would sound exactly yeah, the same. Yeah, it would sound exactly the same. So as it depends on one. depends on personal preference. Yeah, yeah. But this is very forward. Mm -hmm. Again, people aren't still using <laughs> the face on the 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 expression on people's faces when they ask my pronouns, and I'm like, any pronoun will do. <laughs> like, oh yeah, well, like oh. <laughs> oh, like should I use? Yeah, <laughs> that is fine. Yeah, I just fun. it's uh, it's so I I I I um worked at a Brazilian restaurant in LA for a several mm -hmm. years. So I was, I definitely heard a lot of Portuguese and um, oh, yeah. I love it. It's such a, it's so beautiful. Cause it feels like it's, you were saying Russian, which I think is so interesting. Cause it was always like, cause Brazilian was, is different. Brazilian but, is a but, lot different Brazilian sounding, Portuguese. but not, it's, not written. Written. It's basically, basically the same, the same yeah. but yeah. In, With some um, differences, differences? the pronunciation is just so different. Because Brazilian is closer to pronunciation and uh, closer to Spanish and closer, closer to, to Italian. Closer even. to Italian. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's what. Okay, that's what I'm familiar with. Yeah, it always yeah, sounded yeah, very. Yeah. It sounded Italian to me. When I when I lived in Italy, uh, a lot of the Brazilian community like sounded so Italian immediately. Like six months in. In, in Italy, and they just sounded like Oh, absolutely. Br people and, who go Brazilian, Brazilian and my people, friends used to yeah. call me like Romania. <laughs> <laughs> Which who really oh. means uh, ro um, Romanian. Romanian. Yeah. Romanian. Yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, they thought sure. that I sounded Romanian. Also, also like Eastern European. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So also, interesting. Romanian people, uh, uh, Romanian, uh, the, uh, Romanian language and Portuguese is very similar sounding. Yeah. So Romanian people come a lot to Portugal and learn the language in like a, a month <laughs> yeah, because it's, so it's similar. very similar it's a romance for some reason also. they're very far away yeah yeah i, I, I used to I know did. that i used to know that but like linguistics has been so far away from me now for like yeah. i don't know <laughs> It's, actually, a, I, it's fascinating to me is like i just always like love like hearing the different languages because i did a i did a play in moment it was a it was about the uh Ceausescu revolution and mm -hmm. the late 80s and we had to learn, we had to speak Romanian for a lot of the play. Like it was wow. part of, because it was all about like, this is, you know, and so we had to do like, it was like a, and so I remember like 
Stikla Kuvin Este Pemasa. Like we did like the bottle of oh, wine is on the table. Like you're kind of saying these like <laughs> things that are like lint trap in my brain. Uh-huh. Um, and it's, that sounds yeah, accurate, it's, but I have no idea. <laughs> but that does okay, sound that, very, that was, very well pronounced. That's like, you know, that was a minute ago when I did that. But like, I'm always just because of, and all the, you give gender to nouns, like, mm-hmm. like cat is female and, you know, certain things, you know, it's like, and different, and, and that's always so interesting to me. And it's, well, and I know it's not like people and it's not about their gender expression. And mm-hmm. I know it's kind of crazy to be like, oh, we can't, you know, it's different, but I'm always curious about that, like how we, you know, yeah, there's so much emphasis learning on learning gender. German, uh, uh, a lot of the explanations for the, the genders of, of the words, like the gendered words, uh, was very like, uh, oh, the, the moon is masculine because something, and like it would be the exact opposite in Portuguese. Like the the moon is uh, is feminine, but like you can invent a reason for like sure. for attributing the <laughs> the, um, right. the, the gender to it. But yeah, for instance, what you said like gato uh, for uh, gato. I'm sorry, uh, cat uh, gato in Portuguese. Ugato. Ugato. So that's so that's the, masculine. The masculine, masculine cat. So it's like G A T O gato. Or mm. for instance, you said people pessoas. That's feminine in plural. Uh, persons, but personas, more or less. Okay. <laughs>